gonna go out of my comfort zone here and step out onto it. I'm probably gonna regret this, but I do not like this one bit. This is Cave Cricket City. Today, coming to you from a rail trail currently, I'm with Randy of Emerton Productions, and we're on to our second location of the day. If you haven't seen the first one, it will be linked down below if you want to check it out. But we're currently heading to an abandoned, I guess you could consider it abandoned, right? Yeah, it's abandoned. Abandoned, disused train bridge. And it's one that he told me about last year, and I wanted to come down and see it for myself. So we're headed there now, and once we do get closer to it and arrive on the location, I'll give you some more information about it, and hopefully we'll be able to cross it as well. So if you like to see it as well, well, all you gotta do is come along with us. My ride of choice today is my Angway Engine Pro, and Randy is riding his Jason EB7, I believe that's version two. So this rail trail was originally a Pensy line, Pennsylvania Railroad, later used by Conrail, and last used in either the late 70s, early 80s, most likely early 80s. So Randy was explaining that the rail trail we're on does curve off to the left, but the actual lines are still in existence here. That is, that is the Pennsylvania Railroad lines. There's a bump stop right there. And he said up here was a yard for both the Pensy and for Reading lines. And what you see here is the remnants of an old power plant that was here that was serviced by train to deliver coal for the furnaces. There is a substation here which is still in active use, but the remnants of what used to be here is still standing. The lines are gated up there, but we're going to be following the trail. It's going to bring us around to the other side. And he said there's more evidence over there of switches and rails and other things of the sort. So we're going to be continuing over in that direction and we'll pick up from there. Well, we're making a quick pit stop. Randy stopped to show me something that he already documented before. And he's like, Jay, I think you want to see it for yourself. So down here in this little ravine area is something rather peculiar. It appears to be possibly part of a rail car. We're gonna get down there closer and inspect it. And also there is a culvert right here too. So let me safely get down there and we'll take a closer look at that. Just climbed down and standing by it now. If it is indeed a rail car, I don't know what type it would be. This seems to be more of a container that would ride on top of a rail car. It seems very small. It's almost like a uh, dumpster of sorts has doors on it so I'm honestly not too familiar with what kind of rail car this would be there's nothing inside as far as the insides there's no wheel trucks no axles no nothing there is some stamping there which is actually this might be upside down because I see PRR Amazing. so indeed this is a type of rail car and it's sitting upside down. Randy confirmed on the outside it is PRR with an M. That looks like a 1613. Is that what it says? It's a 3161. 3161. Okay, I was reading it backwards. Yep, 3161. 3161 M and PRR. If you guys have any idea what type of car this would be or how it would have been utilized, I'm thinking this is maybe a container that oh, sat on a flat car. But 100% was at least owned by the PRR. Was just inside, came outside. Looking on this end, there actually is the same thing here. Just harder to see, but PRR. Upside down, you can see the big hinges on these doors. It's like a double hinge, so it can open and then swing open like that. Definitely my first time seeing a type of container or car like this. I still don't have any confirmation that this would have been actually its own type of train car or freight car. I'm thinking this was maybe sitting on a type of flatbed or something of sorts. But again, anyone that has any information, you're welcome to share it. And this is looking at what we saw on the inside. So I'm going to actually do some editing magic. I'm going to flip this upside down for you and you'll be able to see the proper orientation of it. 
That way you could uh, see what we were seeing just upside down. Even, even looking on the hinges here too, the hinges have PRR. So PRR M51201 right there on the hinge. And PRR M64206, this is all stamped with PRR. Now as to how it got down here, that's up for uh, your own speculation. But he did say it's in proximity to the rail yard that was here, so it could have been put here by, what do you think? Well, back in the day when this was, you got to remember these lines were removed sometime in the 70s or 80s was when they got rid of the Pennsylvania Railroad when Conrail ripped the tracks out. My guess was this was an old dilapidated cart to begin with. These trees weren't here. Somebody probably just pushed it, pushed it yeah. down in here. Which would make sense why it's upside down too. Yep. And it's sitting right in front of this pretty good size concrete culvert. It's actually big enough to where I could actually stand all the way up in and it goes underneath. Where's it go to? I'm gonna walk in just a little bit to see if I could see if it, which direction it goes, but I'm not looking to explore this today, but it definitely has my curiosity peaked. Oh, actually I see a doorway up there. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a doorway up there. Okay. And of course we don't have our lights. For yeah, my light's up on the bike. <laughs> You know, maybe on the way back, I might come, uh, on the way when we return, I do have my flashlight up on the bike. I might venture in just a little bit to show you what it looks like. If it looks like it's worth exploring, I'll definitely do this in the warmer months. So for orientation earlier, we were on the other side of those stacks over there. We were showing you where the remnants of the Pensy line is still in existence. And this big open area here was all part of the yard. Some of the tracks are still in place on the inside of the fence, but this whole area, Looking in this direction was all part of the yard for Pensy and Redding. So it was a good sized yard. You can imagine the amount of coal cars they were storing here and the activity that was taking place back in the day. But from here to the fence, it's open land. We may go through this area on the way back, but where the rails are beyond the fence, it is posted, but we may have better viewing access further up. Peering through the fence, you could see, well, I could see at least three lines. The one closest to us, one a few feet past that, and one further in the distance, which is pretty overgrown. So, again, this is just a, a fraction of what used to be here. As to why they left those tracks there in place, I have no answer to that. I always do wonder why they leave some, remove others. But again, there would have been tracks all around here. But where Randy is, though, he said there's a switch up there which we should be able to see as well. So let's head over there and check that out. Not sure if you could see it. I'll put an arrow on the screen pointing to it, but there is a yellow handle signifying that there's a switch there, switching the tracks from one to the other. And I do see, uh, see them a bit more visible now. There's definitely at least three, possibly four lines that are still laying back here behind this fence. And there's another switch handle just a little bit further up, a battery box there for a signal at the time. There could be more switches down here, but it's just so overgrown. overgrown yeah, you can't see them. Trees, you can't see them or anything. But these are the three that I found last year when I was here. Yeah, so that's just more confirmation that the yard was here, and the amount of switching that took place to get from one line to the next was pretty significant. So we're veering off the rail trail now. You can see there is still existing line here we're outside of the fenced area so this is able to be accessed i guess you could say lines are kind of cut the one here is exposed hanging up in the air but we're gonna be going into the woods here because the line actually curved off i can see it through the woods and that curve is going to lead us right to the abandoned train bridge We arrived on site, it is a bit breezy here. And we're now down below the bridge. And as you'll see, it is a curved bridge. Still in good condition, still has railing on it. Still has rails on it. And there's one, two, three, four, 
five, six support columns in the river holding this line up. And this was used up until the early 2000s, around 2004 or so. And it was, was used to deliver coal to the facility to run their giant furnaces for the power plant. Now there is no official name of this bridge that we know of, but there is a date mark here, 1955. And Randy did confirm with me, and I just wanted to get clarity of it, that this was originally serviced by the Reading Line. This was a spur line that came out the main line on the other side, and the spur line went through the yard that we saw and serviced that industry there with the, the furnaces delivering coal. That's the only thing this was used for. It was last used in the early 2000s, by a combination of uh, Conrail going into Norfolk Southern. Right now it has been used in roughly 20 years. So it is in an abandoned state, but it, from what we heard, it could be used again as they are advertising the area for uh, property sales, industry uh, building to be able to be serviced by rail. So in the future, this, this bridge may indeed see action by train once again. Randy's making his way up. Right now we're standing in the line can tell it has been used for quite some time. Sections of it are quite overgrown. But the rail still looks to be in pretty good condition. That was a little precarious because if you look, it's a straight down drop. We do have a nice gated platform to walk on here, but you can see through it, which isn't ideal for me. But this is in much better shape than some of the other bridges I have come across. Now, I did bring my drone with me. I was hoping it still might get some drone footage, but it actually is quite windy up here. A lot more windier than it was on the rail trail just because it's all open here and over the river. Randy, what river is this? Schuylkill River this is crossing so we're actually going in from one county to the other and again this is a spur line on the other side it will connect to the main line so far it's not bad it is in pretty good condition like I said there is a railing here there is the platform here that's graded I'm not a huge fan of that because you can see it's moved to the bottom I'm kind of walking on the grates over the ties so there is some more obstructions with visibility seen through to the bottom and more stability as well and as we make our way through at some point i will try to get some dates or information off the rails but again roughly 20 years this has been used it's holding up quite well i'm sure it is looked after but it's not posted at all there's no signs from any railroad company or property stating that we can't be here there's no purple paint just general guidance saying keep the gate closed from where we entered and then up here, it's basically free reign of this location. This is probably the scariest spot for me on this bridge is this little cutout here. There's a few of them. I guess you would be on here if a train was coming to get out of the way. And we've seen that in other locations as well, just a different design. I'm going to go out of my comfort zone here and step out onto it. I'm probably going to regret this, but yeah, Randy, get your camera out because it's probably not going to happen again. There's Jay going down into the tunnels. Uh, oh boy. Whew. Getting the shakes in the legs. Just look at me. All right. Randy, document that I did it. <laughs> I'm glad it's over. <laughs> That's all I could say. I just wanted to keep you standing out there as long as I know, I know. <laughs> what a guy. What a hell of a friend. <laughs> I owe you one. <laughs> so we made our way around the sweeping bend here. Things were going fine walking on the graded platform there. And now it changed to wooden planks. And those are even worse. So I am now walking between the rails on the ties. This is my safe zone right now. I just do not trust planks like that 
on either side. So just gonna play it safe, get to the other side and go from there. You probably hear me a lot better now. I'm finally close to the other side. Out there, it's so windy, it's almost unbearable. You probably couldn't even hear me most of the time, which made for some terrible audio. And this is one of the few times I'm using my Osmo Action 3 instead of my new Osmo Pocket 3, which has my wireless audio with the wind muff. That would have been greatly needed for something like this. But over here though, we're nearing the end and it just goes into nature reclaiming this line. And as I mentioned, this is why I don't walk on the planks because some of them are missing, some could be rotted, some have some nails sticking up. So even though some of the ties in the middle are not in the greatest condition, it is much better than walking on either side. You don't know the last time they actually had any weight on them and I just don't trust it. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, which I'm sure many of you could understand. Back on land, and I could say that there's a nice sweet smell of creosote. Actually smells quite nice right now. Being here on March 1st, there is no foliage, so things are the most visible that they will be this time of year. But as you can imagine, in the coming months, this is gonna be pretty thick and overgrown. There is somewhat of a path going through here in the middle of the gauge. The sides are completely really thick. A lot of thorns and vines and everything else. A little bit further down the line now, we came through the brush area, came to a clearing. A couple things I want to point out. The tracks are obviously right there, but off to the side, there's another set of tracks which are just right next to each other. And they're not even evenly uh, lined up. One's higher than the other. And they're actually over here too on the other side. There's also a type of temporary crossing here with some wood and con um, pavement because over in this area was a desilting area, desilting weir, which I've documented in the past near the Hamburg area. So this area was used for desilting back in the 50s, but trains did indeed come through here much later than that. But the line does continue around, sweeps around, and probably a few hundred more yards is where the active main line is before Norfolk Southern. Randy said trains mainly run at night, very rare during the day, but this line can indeed be used again in the future, just coming off that main line. All they have to do is basically clear all the brush out of here, replace some ties, some spikes, and it'll be ready to roll to go back through that yard to that power plant that we showed earlier in the video. So I told you I wanted to find some dates and information and we did get lucky and find some right here. So 130 pound rail, BSCO steel tin. What's BS? Is that um I'm, Bethlehem steel? I'm okay, it's the night. No, before. that's open hearth. Oh that's okay. the process sorry. of it. Oh. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. November nineteen twenty-five. Wow. Yes, yeah, so this is a nice, clear, visible. I'm gonna confirm, I believe Bethlehem steel, but there might be another manufacturer with that stamping as well, but definitely Steelton, 11 tally marks, 1925, and OH for open hearth, the process of making these rails. But these are here, or I should say these were created, if you think about it, 99 years ago. Yeah, 99 so, years ago. November this year will be 99, will be, will be 99 yep. years, yep. And they're holding up quite well. I mean, these could definitely, see trains again in the future. They're in really good condition. When they make things to last, they make them to last.
All right, I'm gonna take you guys with me, give you guys a visual for yourself as if you were standing on here with me. Oh boy. I do not like this one bit, but that is the view. And I am beyond my comfort zone and I'm going back. Finally back towards where we started and wasn't even worth me filming out there in the middle on the way back. The open area there, just extremely windy, probably 15 to 25 mile per hour gusts. One thing I pointed out is that this bridge has no inner derail tracks. Often, or most times when I do film bridges, we see the inner tracks that are closer engaged. And I've explained that those are for a derailment. It would catch the train from going too far off, prevent it from rolling over off the bridge and being a bigger problem than what it already is. So there's no derail tracks on the inside here. And this is one of the few bridges that has a sweeping curve. Traditionally, most bridges are just point A to point B straight across. This one does have a nice sweeping curve to it. So it is uh, unique in two aspects. Despite me having some difficulty in some areas, I was glad I was able to accomplish my goal of crossing it giving you different vantage points, different views, different perspectives from the land, so to speak, on the bridge, also from the air. And it was able to capture quite a few photos as well. Special thanks to Randy of Emerald Sound Productions for inviting me down here to check out this location and others today. I don't know what else we have planned, but you may or may not see us again in some upcoming videos. And to see what we did just before this video, check the description down below and there will also be a link to his channel as well. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Oh, those of you who are still watching, got some bonus footage for you. It did return to the concrete culvert. Randy is going to stand guard, watch the bikes up there. I do have my flashlight. And we're going to venture inside just a little bit and see if we come upon anything interesting of sorts. Get some light on. I do see a type of doorway or chamber up ahead. For the most part, it is pretty dry. A couple little trickles of water here and there. And our friends, the cave crickets. Yeah, they're all, they're all jumping about. Actually, to put my hood up because I don't want them jumping down my, uh, jumping down the back of my hoodie. Oh, it gets wet up here. 
and it goes to some older workings. That looks very intriguing. I'm gonna have to walk like a split right now. Ugh. Oh, there's hundreds of cave crickets. That's what you see. They're all jumping down. This is Cave Cricket City. Oh, this looks so interesting though. I'm gonna to have to return at some point and go through this because beyond what I could see, it looks like it goes downhill. Oh, wow, and this is some old stonework here. So it's concrete mixed with stone. We do have a overhead uh, door up there to the surface. So we're about 15 feet below the ground. But back there is, I guess you could say, unlike anything I've ever seen for a culvert where it goes like this, goes downhill. But I'm gonna need to have some muckers on, clothes that I don't mind getting dirty and gonna have to deal with all the cave crickets because there is hundreds if not thousands of cave crickets back there. Just when I approach this area, they're all jumping down from the ceiling. So, gonna have to return, but this definitely has my interest, so I'm gonna keep this on my list of places to revisit in the future. Hopefully this summer I'll be able to return with someone. Uh, if not, I'll just have to come really well prepared and equipped for anything and see how far that goes, because that definitely, definitely has me wanting to return. Without a doubt. Echo! Randy? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that was you. Me. <laughs> you made it here. <laughs> you see my light? I'm a loser. Yeah, I'm up top here. Nice. Alright, I'm gonna turn around. This is pretty cool. Definitely have to return. I got to take down my cave cricket protection. But yeah, really cool finding. You wouldn't think much of it just from the outside here being concrete, but it definitely goes to older workings and goes downhill. So I'm imagining this probably goes all the way to the river, but without a doubt, it's on my list of places to revisit. You will see it again in the future.